Alrighty then. Got about 25 seconds left on the clock before I start. Maybe I'll just start early. Uh, pause the demo scene because that's not what we're doing tonight. Check all the scenes. Here's my, uh, my camera. I look nice and spooky. There's the workbench. Here's the close-up cam, and the star of the show tonight is going to be this little buddy. There's no music playing. That's because I have not started the music yet. This is what I'm going to be trying. I'm hoping this works. OBS tells me it's capturing it. What this is, is I found a copy of Winamp to install. And I've downloaded a bunch of uh, highly rated public domain mod files from the mod archive. I figured I might give this a try. We got some, some fancy stuff happening over there. Yeah, right, right about here. We got like a fancy little music visualizer going there. We got the uh, classic 90s Winamp going. Hoping that's going to be a good soundtrack. Um, looks neat. Hopefully it's fun to stare at when you're tired of staring at me. No idea if anyone's ever going to watch this tonight because I'm just kind of doing it out of the blue. So, that's me. That's the workbench. That's the star. Let's get into it. So, this is a sound card for my kit computer. Well, hello there, Mimi Dogs. Welcome to the channel. Hopefully I'm somewhat entertaining. Um, this is an RC 2014 kit computer. Maybe it's easier to see on this camera? It's not much easier to see on that camera. Anyway, this is a kit computer. You can see I assembled it from several, uh, from many little circuit boards that I ordered the kit. This is basically styled after like an 80s, 70s era computer. It runs CPM. It's got a bunch of neat little peripherals in it. Um, what it doesn't have until hopefully tonight or soon after tonight is it doesn't have a sound card. Um, I'm hoping to stream for I don't know, about an hour. We'll see how far I get. Hopefully you'll see this thing again when I go to plug it in. So back to this thing. I like the way these things are packaged. I get a bunch of these um, these modules, and they like come in these little like popcorn bags. Let's see if I can uh, peel. I am just going to destroy the labels. I peel it open. What I expect to find in here is a circuit board and some resistors and some chip sockets. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Just in case I don't finish this. Thing, I'm going to get a little plastic bin to put parts in. It's quite possible I don't finish it tonight. It's about like quarter after 10 p.m. here where I am. On a work night, on a school night. All right, so here's the first look at the board. Um, the creator of this board has very kindly already done a bunch of the hard work in the surface mount soldering. Also, I have heard that this right here, that little paw print, that little paw pad, is the, uh, the pads for programming this microcontroller. So that's pretty cute. I'm gonna have to figure out how that works. Um, but yeah, this thing is not um, a, a retro chip. It's the emulator of a retro chip because the retro sound chips are very hard to acquire. The retro sound chips being the uh, YM 2149 and the AY 38910. These were in the um, Spectrum 28K. I think it was in the Atari ST. It was in a bunch of like 80s machines. So it's kind of an appropriate um, card for this thing. So just kind of looking at this, it looks like there's the assembly is going to be, I think, some jumpers here, resistors, some capacitors, a little audio jack. Nothing actually goes in here. This is actually just in case you want to cover up the uh, emulator hardware with a with a fake chip. And a couple chips over here. 
Actually, I have the picture of it open on my desktop. There we go. This is what it's going to look like when it's done. So, you know, got some jumpers. I think this um, is printed on the silk screen here. One makes it uh, compatible with like the software for the system as is. And also, I guess we can run like Japanese MSX software on this computer, and that'll, that's the address for this thing. Um, so yeah, not too bad. It's like seven resistors, two capacitors, three chips, um, three more capacitors, audio jack. If I stop jabbering and get to it, I can probably start soldering. I'll just empty out the bag of parts. Make sure I got everything. I lost a few parts in some of the other cards I made. So I'm going to make sure I don't lose any of this one. Those are our parts. And we got the capacitors. We got some uh, header pins. Audio jack. We got some resistors. Do, 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 do. This is looking like everything we need. Couple of the big capacitors. Oh yeah, I guess there's a chip socket goes in there just to like kind of play pretend. I may or may not solder that in there. All right, um, I think I may be looking up resistor values again because I don't have those memorized. Um, but that looks like our nice little bit of parts. Alrighty, so now I'm gonna switch to this camera so I don't make you ill when I move this. Because what I'm going to do now is bring this thing in. Bring in my helping hands. And the first thing I'm going to do is place some of the parts. I think I'm going to do the resistors and capacitors first. Do, 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 do. Make sure you can see this as I'm starting to work on it. That's probably good. I don't want to make too many big movements on this once I've gotten to like the close-up view because that could be kind of pukey. The glare on there from the light too. Ah uh, well, it's probably fine. Alright. First things first, let's identify some of our parts. I want to figure out I still don't have resistor values memorized. So for a bit of parts over here since my hand's going to be messing around over here. Oh, I'm on the wrong camera. I want the desktop view. Okay, so on our desktop, we're looking for... Resistor... Coat. I had a page bookmark that was telling me all about this. I don't remember where I put it. That out? Oh, this is it. Okay, I have it open in a tab. All right, so first thing I want to find are 3K resistor. And 3K is going to be orange, black, red, and then a tolerance band. I guess the other thing I can do, yeah, let's do this too. I was bringing out my meter earlier to um, measure these things to be sure I got the right thing. Because I realize these um, low tolerance resistors, the blue color makes it hard for me to tell what color they really are. All right, we're looking for orange, black, red. One of our first resistors is, see, I can't really tell what that is. Is that brown, brown, black, blue, brown? That doesn't sound right. I know I need uh, three of them. How about this one? Orange, black. I don't know, it all looks black to me. That's kind of weird. It's annoying. So, let's turn on our meter. I got it set to measure resistance. 
Okay, my meter tells me, I don't know if you can see that on camera. Yeah, you can kind of see that on screen. It says um, three ohms. Three K, three, three K ohms, three K ohms. That's what I want. Well, these are the right results. But really, I can't tell that color. It's, I'm looking for orange, black, red, and uh, I guess I can tell the orange. I guess I could tell the black. I don't know what the other two bands are. Orange, black, red, and then like some other band. There's like four bands. Huh. Well, I'm curious now to measure other ones. Let's see. I got two. These are probably 1K or 1K6. Okay, this is a 1K resist. It says this is pretty this is pretty close to 1K. We're gonna call that 1K. Which then ideally makes this a 1K6. Uh, survey says yep 1K6. Okay. Cool. Well, I've kind of I, I've kind of sussed out my parts here. Yeah, so this is a three K ohms. Three K ohms go right here. I'm just gonna kind of like pre-bend these before I stick them into the board. As you can't see it focus at all. That goes there. I'm going to bend the legs up behind the board so when I flip it over to solder it, they'll stay put. Yeah, hopefully that's still working. I'm going to try to be picky and line them up if the colors all go in the same way. I got the orange is heading to the right of the board. I'm going to try to keep these all the same direction. Just because it kind of looks prettier that way, I guess. Oh yeah, don't mind my fingers, your fingernails. Yeah, I was trying some nail polish on them and it's all flaking off. Hopefully that just adds to the, uh, the hacker aesthetic. All right, one last resistor here. I'm just gonna bend them. Drop them in the board. for those uh, 1K resistors. <laughs> the Hacker Patina, yeah. They've been scraped out with tools and other careless crap. All right, 1K resistors. Like I got my 1K. Yeah, usually I do like dark purple or black nail polish, but let's try something different. What did I say these were? These are 1K, right? I feel like this is very uh, harsh cyber music right now. Sure I get these colors lined up too. It's a little unsatisfying when I don't manage to get the pins that go in exactly level. Oh well.
All right, make sure I got those colors lined up. I think I do? Yeah. Lining up the colors does nothing for the board, it just makes it look prettier. At least more consistent. And I'm not exactly lined up. And I don't think I'm helping. I'm gonna leave it because if I mess with that too much, I'm gonna I'm gonna break the resistors. I guess this means it's got an artisanal look to it. And then I'm pretty sure these are 1K6s. I already measured them, but I'm ADHD, so I'm forgetting everything as I say it. 1K6. Now the components that do matter what direction I put them in is are going to be the electrolytic capacitors. All right, so we got our resistors in there. We'll come in there. Go in there, you bugger. That's probably good enough. They're not perfectly lined up, but uh, it's good enough for government work. All right, so we've got two capacitors. What capacitors are those? Looks like uh, C9CH. Yeah, that doesn't tell me. Are they the same capacitors? Oh, okay, they're the same capacitors. They're both 16 volt, 470 microfarads. Just, just to confirm, the uh, this has a bore bill of materials on it. Somewhere, additional information, yada 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 yada. No. Somewhere around here, there's a, there it is, bill of materials. Yeah, so that tells me I have two. Oh, this is uh, 47 microfarad. This is 470 microfarad. Ah, well, that's what I got. All right. So the stripe on the board, that is the stripe on the capacitor. Tells me put it in this way. Where do you think go? Oh, there's the other one. Alright, now what else we got that we can put in there and bend? These are probably some of the easiest parts. This is going to be a bank of um, jumpers. Those are a little harder to put in. Socket. Uh, oh, I can put these capacitors in. Chip sockets are a little harder to put in. I should look this up someday. I'm always confused that some capacitors, like these electrolytics, are polarized, but other capacitors, like these little orange guys, are not polarized, apparently. I feel like that's a thing I knew at one point, and I've since forgotten. Alright, we got that one in. And then once I get these three in, I'm going to flip the board 
upside down and start soldering. I'm gonna do it the stages. I've been streaming for almost a half hour. I hope now that I'm kind of underway, maybe I can actually finish this. And I... What would be lovely is if then I can hook it up to the computer and actually uh, demonstrate it making noises. We'll see if I get that far. Hopefully I don't botch anything one more. All right, that's enough components for now. Now we can see the, uh, the mess underneath now that I've stuck all the, uh, all the legs through. But that's okay. This will clean up as I go. Keeps that boops good go. Yeah, it's always satisfying to make a thing do a thing. That's the end of the stream. Alright. Well, let's start with these little guys. Oh, they're all kind of, it's all kind of a tangle, so this is almost kind of like a game of pickup sticks. the way. Come on, little guy. There we go. So yeah, the music this thing's gonna make is also very bloopy bleepy. So the current soundtrack is appropriate. usually wait to the end to clip all these leads, but hopefully this will help me kind of gradually clean up the mess as I go. I've found assembling these boards to be pretty forgiving, so hopefully that continues to be the case here. Knock on wood, inshallah, everything I've built so far has worked. Well, except for one board. But I managed to fix that one. I'm not entirely sure how I broke the, the first board I tried building. This, uh, the only way to start here is just to start. I can reach that one. That one. No, I can't really reach that one. Bump the camera. I'm gonna move this camera a little bit because I keep kind of whacking it. There. Less of an extreme close up, I guess. Buddy. 
Yeah, some of these are a little hard to get until I snip some more wires out of the way. Make sure I don't snip any of the ones I haven't soldered yet. But you'll see as I'm going, it gradually kind of... The board gets cleaner. And I can get to things. solder joints too. Hmm. Tweezers might help here too. The music is kind of well, it has a bit of silence at the end, I guess. Yeah, there's the back. Oh, it's got a little bit of a leg left on it. There we go. That looks like fun. Yeah, it's just kind of fun. It's like um, like putting together a jigsaw puzzle. Only when I'm done, it does things. That's painful than what you were just doing. What were? Oh, should I ask what you were just doing? What were you just doing? Were you recapping something with tiny, tiny capacitors? Just guessing. Land. Yeah, we're slowly getting through the tangle of all these legs. Soldered a massive amount of bodge wires to TSS OP16 chips, cutting traces, adding chips to a board you screwed up. Oh. I have done things like that before. It's not fun. A lot of digital logic timing issues. Yeah, luckily this thing is like seven megahertz. So very, 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 very forgiving on traces. This is like 1980s technology basically here. So hopefully something like this is a bit more soothing. But that is super satisfying when the thing actually works after wrestling with it. But yeah, this is this is this is uh, this is just kind of fun soldering. Your thing runs at one kilohertz. Oh, okay. Hello, the Ruin. Welcome to the stream. Hopefully I'm entertaining. I might not be. If I'm not entertaining, hopefully the music is. I 
wasn't sure who might show up to watch us. I just kind of posted about it on the Fediverse. Real impromptu. No advance warning. Happy to see folks show up. Yeah, the Winamp playing mods is pretty cool. I forgot that Winamp was still a thing that exists and that you could download. And then I forgot that, um, which way am I pointing? Like that thing right there, that, that milk drop. I forgot milk drop. For the music visualization. visualization. You have this feeling you're probably doing way more than most of your classmates. Oh, is this project for a yeah, oh, solo senior project for college. Huh, yeah, yeah. You're, you probably are doing way more than your classmates. Just from a surface description of it. And see many folks do this stuff. Yeah, I would like to stream myself doing more of the stuff. The other, the other thing I'd like to do I'm out in my um, I'm out in my workshop right now. You can kind of see my my workbench here. Um, in my basement, I have several '80s arcade machines. One of them is an Atari Tempest. I would like to get it working again because it doesn't really work. So I may try to do some of these streams from inside the house and see if I can get this streaming setup to work there. Then you can see the inside of an '80s arcade machine. See if I manage to do that. Oh, okay, you're here from Fetty. Your artifacts would change your name because you're being a dark. <laughs> nice. We like to have fun around here in chat. I don't know. I'm, I haven't been streaming that long. Gotta go to bed. Wanna stop by? Oh, thanks for stopping by. Let's see. I think that's all the parts I have ready to solder for now. But yeah, I'm hoping to do this thing more often. I don't know if I'll do it consistently. I am super random in ADHD and we'll end up doing this at just random hours. I am um, exporting these to YouTube. So if you want to see more of this stuff, go to, to I think it's like YouTube slash L.M. Orchard. Or just look for Less Orchard on, on YouTube. You'll see some of my previous streams. But, uh, but yeah, have a good night. I'm probably only, only going to be doing this for like another 20 minutes, ideally. Because I, too, need to go to bed. Yeah, let me see. Actually, let me look this up real quick. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm sure it's in my browser history. Um. Oh, there I am. Oh, but I actually changed my name at one point. So this should redirect or something. Yeah, there we go. YouTube slash at Ellen Orchard. This is your first time catching me live? Yeah, I'm I'm on I've done it at all hours. I've done it at like in the morning, I've done it at lunch my time. Now this is uh 1043 p.m. time my time. But yeah, I got a few of these uploaded to uh, youtube.com slash at Ellen Orchard. Um and of course there's there's VODs here on Twitch. Basically, I'm doing the live stream to, like, capture what I'm doing, and maybe folks will watch it while I'm doing it. But then, uh, since I'm so random, the YouTube channels where stuff's going to end up at some point. I kind of want to, like, host my own videos, like self-host, but self-hosting video is expensive. Uh, maybe I don't want to do all of these at the same time. One thing I'm trying to do here is to make sure I'm saying this if only for myself. These little notches. Oops, I just scratched the board. 
These little notches need to match up with little notches in the sockets, and then the chips match up. Nubbins. Those little notches. Alright. What I really need to do... I'm gonna do a dumb thing. I'm gonna do a real dumb thing. This is, I've, I've done this dumb thing a bunch of times. So... I got helping hands. Helping hands can help me do many things. That's kind of a neat tune. Kind of sounds like Blaster Master or something. Alright, so I have a helping hand to hold my solder. My human hand is going to hold the sockets in. And then I'm going to bring... This sucks. This is stupid. There's a better way to do this, and I, and I don't know what it is. But I hold these in, and I just... I'm not going to do all of the pins. I just kind of go... Uh, tack... Ouch, that's hot. Attack. Uh, Tack that in. Use your pinky to hold them in. Attack in the car, yeah. I guess maybe what I'm doing isn't absolutely stupid. I've tried to do it with painter's tape before. And that doesn't super help. I've like, I've done a bunch of different things and then I just say screw it and do this. And then I try not to burn my thumb. But then sometimes I burn my thumb. Mm, get the heck in there. Not dumb if it works. Use Play-Doh to hold components? Oh, okay, I can see that. Too. All right, they feel pretty. Oh, I didn't tack this one in at all. I've seen Play-Doh and blue tack and a few other ways. This socket doesn't actually need to be soldered in. It's actually just there for decoration. But I think I'm going to do it anyway. And then once these are kind of tacked in, I can put it back in the helping hands and finish the rest of the job. I think I've just kind of like resigned myself to getting burnt occasionally when I'm doing this stuff. Usually drag solder most dip chips. Yeah. I have not. Um, I oh, you can't even see what I'm doing. I'm just staring at this thing and dissociating. So those are mostly there. I haven't, I haven't really gotten very good at drag soldering yet. All right, so. I believe, let me double check this, because I don't want to put these um, pin headers in the wrong way. Yeah, okay. And I'm not showing you the screen. It's all flex and having the right iron, iron tip. Yeah, I should, I should uh, tinker some more with that. Learn me uh, the right way to do this. I had just started learning, like, surface-mounted crap last summer. Okay, so I think these headers go in vertically. That looks like there are jumpers. Wait, do they go? No, wait. That does, does that make sense? Go to the back of the board. Okay, yeah, I think it makes sense. Happy went with TSSOP 1460 packages, QFN. Q what, QFN, is that like, um, I've read these terms before. <laughs> is that like where it's just solder balls? Underneath the chip? Solder, solder package sizes, okay. At some point, I want to get a microscope and do more, um, more tiny stuff. BGA is the solder box. Yeah, yeah, okay. BGA is the solder on the, on the chip. 
because I have seen some videos of folks doing like reballing of BGA stuff, and it looks very fraught and uh, annoying. All right, it'll be a miracle if I get all these headers. Stay. I'm trying not to touch the bottom pins, and the bottom pins are the ones I'm going to try to solder. Yeah, you can basically. You're repairing game consoles. Not much time because of college. Well, when I was in college, depending on the semester, I either had all the time in the world or, or like no time at all. So yeah, like there were some semesters I took way too many classes, and then. Other semesters, I was like, what even is college? Or what even is class? You get to BJ stuff, and you're like, nope. Yeah, I think that's, um... Yeah, they're a little crooked. I don't think I care about them being there. You probably can't tell that much. You can kind of tell. I don't care. Yeah, I see BJ stuff. Like, I see people replacing, um like flash modules and stuff and I'm like oh, no I still have to solder here. Oh this this audio jack. Alright so now I'm gonna get um oh this is really weird. I'm trying to keep this in camera. This is camera focuses pretty well. This is a um a four or five year old Android camera or Android phone that I'm using as a spare camera. Works pretty well. Oof. Running out of hands to adjust the helping hand. And ideally what I'm doing here is I'm really just tacking this stuff in so that I can get it back out of my hand and put it into the helping hand and do some proper soldering. Yeah, I'm probably even using the wrong tip for this too. Most of the semester is self-study. Would you find it be more work? <laughs> um, is it self-study like you set your own curriculum and uh, or set your own goals and you maybe uh, set yourself too much to do? Because that's what I would do. No. Nope. Put this in. This is the uh, this is actually the bus connector. The professor gives you work to do a due date, and you have them to complete. It. Oh, okay. I've had that too, and my problem with that is I would always put crap off. Not saying that's what you do, but that's what I would do. I say I got plenty of time. That's what I would do. German course, usually a bunch of online busy work garbage. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I'm old. It's been a while since I was in college. I have a class called Energy Systems, which is kind of a joke. YouTube video where two people upgraded the onboard RAM on one of those fancy Lenovo gaming gave me handhelds. Oh. Yeah, one of those Lenovo handhelds is tiny to begin with. That just sounds awful.
senior project takes as much time as anything else will. I, uh, I wish you all the luck in, uh, in meeting all the goals. All right. I think that's pretty... It, it almost looks done if I didn't have, like, dozens of pins left to solder. Working on biomedical research projects as an assistant. A cousin of mine got into... Uh, she was starting in uh, computer science, and she absolutely bailed on that to get into biomedical stuff. I'm not exactly sure what she's doing now, but she seemed to be really happy with switching to that. Alright, well now it's just soldering a whole bunch of pins. Which, yeah, you can see that. Pretty, so yeah, the biomedical stuff is not like directly up your alley. I don't know, unless you work on, Neur on Neuralink or something. Alright, these are all soldered. These are not soldered. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have missed something by the time I think I'm done soldering. So then I'll just kind of like give it an eyeball, see how I did. Alright, so now I get more socket pin. Try not to melt the rubber. Really, I should probably be using a finer soldering tip. RF heating thing. Hmm. did start to melt my uh, little alligator clip there. That's, that's all
Oops. Solder is coming off my spool here. There we go. Just a few dozen more joints. Alright, I think that just leaves the bus connector. I'm going to turn that a little bit, catch the light a little better. Just a few more. like elevator music. All right. I think I got it. I think it's done. I think it's done soldering. Well, I'm done, I think. So now, time to give the board a look. It's pretty grungy. I think I'm gonna give it a, yeah, it's got flux splattered all over. I'm gonna give it a spritz with some cleaner. Left my alcohol in the house, so I might just use some like contact. The uh, bus pins look not awful. The uh, chip sockets don't look terrible. Nothing goes here. Really care about that chip sock. Not awful. I think I got uh, I got that X soldered pretty well enough. I don't like that. I don't know why I don't like that. Eh. All right, from this side it looks pretty all right. I got the. Uh, Sockets in the right orientation. And all the capacitors in. Yeah. Okay. Got a couple jumpers. I think the legend here, Ellen May. Jumpers go like so. Oh, 
I'll come on, little buddy. Looks good, yeah, I think it's looking not terrible. Um, next step will be to get to populate the chips. And then we got our little headers in there. I think that sets it up. The uh, RC2014. Do, 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 do. Nothing's falling out of the board, so that's a good sign. Um, and again... Do, do, do. How do I center it in the camera? Yeah, there we go. You can see that. This is what we're building. We're getting pretty close. Visually. All right. So what chips are we looking for? Because I also have... Little baggy. Oops. Looks like we got. Let me uh, zoom in on this. Just to be sure. We got. I still don't know my logic chips, so I'm just kind of like reading the numbers off. Let's see, that first one looks like an SN74HC86N someday. I will know what that means. I have some vague knowledge of what it means. Open up our package. Get the chips out. Hopefully I don't send them flying all over my workshop. All right, what do we got first? It also helps that the chips are all different sizes. Okay, so I'm not gonna get them all screwed up. Ideally. Chips all have different numbers of pins. Oh, and they're labeled on the, on the silk screen of the board. Okay. Now, see the, the, the guy's name Spencer Owen, who designed this kit, is really good at making this pretty much a snap assemble. All right, so this is 74HCT86E. 74HC86. I believe that's correct. Yeah, that's our first chip. Looks like um, 86, 138, and 688. Yep. 8.6 is an XOR gate. Okay. I do know, like, one of these is for addressing the board on the bus of the computer. I could look at the schematic and learn more. Part of the reason I'm building this, this is so that, like, uh, 138 is going to be a decoder. Okay. Yeah, part of the reason I'm building this is so that I can get a working computer and then, like, go back and uh, understand what it all does. 138. Make sure the match is up. Six six is an eight bit magnitude comparator. Alright. Ooh. And then this one is slightly bent. Very gentle. Yeah, a lot of these boards for this computer have a lot of um, the same ICs. I imagine because the whole system is using the same like bus address system and using a lot of the same chip logic. Sure, I haven't bent any pins. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Last I see to populate. Most electronics use the same stuff. Okay. Well, then someday, 
I will understand a lot more about it. And I'm mostly a software guy, but I, I under, I imagine that if I picked up what all the basic components do, it'll feel a bit like software, like when you can, when you connect software components together. You know the ins and the outs and the, the dependencies and the requirements and yada yada. Like putting together Legos. Bend the leads of the chip using your desk. Oh! Bend the leads of the chip using my desk. Actually, that would have been a good, uh, a good idea far earlier in this project. All right. So again, this socket doesn't get populated. The recommendation for this socket is if you have a vintage chip that's broken. You can put it in here as decoration. Um, the microcontroller under here emulates the vintage sound chip. Oh, I think we're built. You put the chip on your desk and carefully roll it, bend all the leads at once. Yeah, okay, I'll try to remember that next time. Because I've been like tediously trying to do it with my soft and curvy thumb, which does not guarantee straight chips, straight pins. Get this to display on my phone until Mega 48. Yeah, that should be good enough for posterity. 48 PA. Yeah, it's like it's already flashed with some firmware. It claims to be emulating a um, I think it's, yeah, emulating an, um, an AY38910, which is a common sound chip in uh, some 80s computers. It's going to be at that clock rate. So, um, yeah, I think this thing might be... Zoom out. I did think I was actually going to get that put together by this point, so now I'm kind of winging it. I've been streaming for an hour and 12 minutes. I'm going to have a hard stop at an hour and a, and a half. I'm not going to go farther than that. I assemble the chip, or I mean, I assemble the board. If I don't get it to work nearly immediately, I'm going to, I'm going to call it. But here's the computer. Maybe I can get a better view of it. 8-bit AVR risk based Pico Power microcontroller. The <laughs> micro might be more powerful than the PC you're plugging it into. I would not, um, I would not be surprised at all. This is a weird hobby. We get the, this like kit computer, runs on a Z80. Um, yeah, this kit computer runs on, this is the CPU board. And it's just a Z80 CP. And this thing, um, this thing runs CPM on a Z80. Got 512 kilobytes of RAM, and it and it runs at um, seven seven megahertz. Because this is this is the clock board, and it's set to like seven point three seven two eight. Yeah. It's not a beefy computer. It's a fun computer. Can you get that in the right spot? Yeah. So the peripherals here, I guess to give it a quick tour, you can cut it. This, this is a very close up view, but let's see. Give me a quick tour. This is just a general um, blinking lights and pushy buttons, I.O. board. This is a real-time clock. This, I believe... Yeah, this is the RAM and ROM board. This is a compact flash hard drive. That's the CPU, that's a clock board. This is a serial card. This blue card here, this is serial. This is a Wi-Fi board. It's got an ESP8266 in it, which also I think is faster than the whole computer. And then this... This is kind of neat. This card is 
a Raspberry Pi Pico based VGA and USB keyboard terminal. So, uh, yeah, probably a couple of the components in here are themselves far more powerful than the, uh, the main computer. Yeah, the Pico is the GPU, yep, yep. Yeah, that's the, uh, doing the job of rendering the, um, the characters, which back in the 80s would have been hot shit compared to, uh, 3D graphics. Alright, so, this looks like it's just a single pin row. So this is the, um, there's the standard bus, the enhanced bus. This is like the standard bus, a single row, and then this is the enhanced bus. It's got the single row plus an expansion row. This board only needs to go into a standard bus. And hopefully... Oh yeah, and this case is 3D printed, and I printed some of these, like, socket uh, covers. Just to kind of try to keep it neat. I don't know how well I'm doing at keeping it neat. Alright. I've been kind of stalling, hooking it up. So actually what I'm going to do for this, I, I'm not going to hook it up to a monitor. So... First off, there's power. This is just 5 volts. 5 volt power. I got a power strip at the back of my workbench that's got USB sockets for power. But what I'm gonna do, I think, is hook it up to my streaming computer here. You designed and 3D printed a case for your senior project too. Yeah, it's really fun to do just that kind of like light product design. Oh, we didn't want it to turn on yet. So an interesting thing, I want to use the serial card and use a terminal on my streaming computer to talk to it, which means this terminal card has to come out because they conflict on the serial port. Would look cool while wall mounted. Yeah, I'm also thinking about possibly making like a retro style luggable out of this thing. Except it would be like a tackle box instead of a suitcase. Alright, so now I got this. Uh, what is this? This is just like a serial to USB FTDI once it use it. But yeah, this would look pretty cool mounted some way, interestingly. But yeah, I was thinking like the old like Compaq or um, K Pro or whatever luggables from the 80s. They were like giant suitcases. And like this thing with an LCD screen and like a mechanical keyboard could fit in like a fishing tackle box. If I if I uh, designed it right, I guess. I don't know, I'd, I'd have to see. But it could be neat if it was like a, a luggable tackle box. All right, I got some USB plugs back here. Plug you in. Let's see, ground pin is here, so we want to do this. Alright. Okay. Let's clear some space on the desk here. I've got crap all over the place now. Wires going everywhere. A hack tackle? <laughs> Yeah, it's something like that. It can, with the Wi-Fi card, it can um, technically Telnet and SSH out. I can, I can actually SSH with this. Because the, the Wi-Fi modem is more powerful than the entire computer. All right, I'm gonna share my screen again. I'm gonna share it, there we go. Um, I'm gonna use Putty. I'm going to try to get it on this window. There we go. Load the settings. Speed.
speed is correct, I think. Okay, so. Oh, I got the wrong Kong port, though. Let's see what Kong port this is. Oh, come on, little computer, you can do it. Hello there, lucky Dolo7. I want device manager. Oh, great device manager. Tell me what frickin' COM port I'm using. Oh, where'd the device manager go? There we go. Get back on there. Device manager, unknown device, COM ports. Do I have to install the Oh, no, no, no. Okay. COM port 7, I believe. Okay. Come on back, Putty. I want serial load COM port 7. I know the other device is a CNC machine I have connected to this uh, computer. You are too big, Mr. Window. There we go. So now you should be able to see as I turn the computer on. There we go. So this is the uh, boot up screen for the computer. It's got this, um, and I can hit reset and it'll run through the boot sequence again. Yeah, this is a uh, pretty standard looking uh, boot screen from like an 80s computer. I just like watching it roll by. So, good news, I plugged in, the new, plugged in the new card and I did not immediately fry my computer. Cool. Um, and it looks like it, the, the ROM is okay, it detected the 5K12 RAM, it detected the serial ports, it detected the clock. Um, I don't have a floppy drive. It does have my compact flash drive. Okay. Well, I'm going to boot into CPM. Then I booted into CPM. And CPM, if you're not familiar, is an ancestor to MS-DOS. Some would say Bill Gates ripped off CPM to make MS-DOS. So CPM is basically a predecessor. Um, now I need an audio cable. <laughs> I did not think this far ahead. Also, I've got tweezers without a cover on them, and I don't know where the cover went, and I don't want to stab myself with the tweezers. Oh, cover's on the floor, of course. Okay. So now the question is, do I have an audio cable? Hmm. I don't know if I do. That's kind of sad if I can't uh, see if the thing makes bleepy bleepy noises because I don't have an audio cable. Like, I guess one thing I could do, there's this software on here called Tune, I think it's called. Or maybe it's VGM Play. Found that found. I mean, yeah. Um. User one. One of these user segments has sample music files. There they are. So these are sample music files. Do -do -do. I don't know what these songs sound like, but I guess what I'm doing right now. I just want to see if it does something that looks like working. Okay, well, that looks like it's working. Now I just need to plug something into the headphone jack here. Hmm. You would have thought, if I knew I was building an audio device, that I'd bring a speaker. Okay, no, that's not it. Hmm. 
I don't know, chat, can you uh, mail me an aux cable real quick? Is that something I can uh, conjure up? Out of the ether. I got a lot of crap around here. Something should be an audio cable. Wait. Wait. Oh no. <laughs> okay, well, so I got um, part of an audio cable. I got an audio I got an audio jack and a and a cut wire, so obviously I did this at some point. I could meter it to watch a number jump around. Yeah, I could do that. I may, might resort to that since I just found an aux cable with the end cut off. I'm also wondering if, since I found the cable with the end cut off, if I could find the other part somewhere in this box I'm rummaging in. Hmm. What's that? No, that's a USB extender. That's it. <laughs> This is the end of a uh, an NES controller extender. That's kind of cool. I'd use that for a project. This is just going to turn into show and tell of my uh, cable junk drawer. Yeah, I may end up metering it if I don't find a cable within the next like thirty seconds. Okay, well, I found a female audio cable also uh, hacked up. Appar I, apparently, I had some project with audio crap at some point in the recent past. No, oh, that's a power cable. That's another power cable. I'm sure the uh, sounds of rummaging in a box are really great. I can stop this. I mean, I guess the other thing I could do, I've got an oscilloscope here. I could see if audio shows up on the oscilloscope while I'm still racking my brains. Making an NES to USB adapter out of our Arduino was one of your first projects. Yeah, that sounds like a like a fun project. I think what I did with it. Oh, I know what I did. Yeah, I hooked um, NES controller up to an Arduino and used a gamepad to control like an LED matrix. Let's see if I remember how to use an oscilloscope. The one thing I haven't done on this stream yet, and I've got a little Rigel DS-1054Z oscilloscope here. It's got a USB connection. And in a previous incarnation of my stream, I uh, had some software where I could share the oscilloscope on the stream. I should set that up again someday. You know, the other thing, I don't know, I don't remember if this thing is um, mono or stereo. It's most probably mono. So I probably don't need um, two channels. But we'll see. So I guess where this cable comes in handy. So hopefully I can uh, hook up to the bare wire and see what it does. I'm pretty sure this is the shield wire. I'm just going to kind of randomly connect the probes. I don't know 
which one is going to be the sound channel or not. We call the music made for oscilloscopes. Oh, yeah, yeah, the music made for oscilloscopes. I saw a software package for um, composing that music. I mean, this is messy as hell, but as long as I don't short anything together. All right, well, we're plugged in. Turn on the oscilloscope. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and grab this and show you. Here's my oscilloscope, which is upside down. You can kind of see that in the corner there. Here's my oscilloscope. It's a nice scope. I am also mostly learning how to use the scope. Well, so I started the music, but I don't see anything happening on the scope. Oh, that's because I'm looking at the wrong channels. Okay, that's promising. There's like some noisy stuff happening on uh, channel one, but that might just be noise. Well... This might be a disappointing end to the stream, because I'm getting tired. I'm a half hour past what I said I was going to do. I don't know, that looks like interesting noise though. Do, do, do. And just poking random buttons on a stupid thing. Uh, kind of an interesting uh, increase amplitude change time base. Yeah, I'm still learning how to do that on this thing. It looks like audio to me, right? And it still says it's playing. So we might have audio. And it looks like something's happening. Left knob is amplitude. Mm. Oh, I see. So that, I think, is the time. <laughs> Sorry, this has got to be super frustrating because you probably actually know how to use this thing. And I'm like... I don't know, I'm just going to jab at some, some knobs until I see an interesting squiggle on the screen. Alright, so I think it might be working. But I still want to hear it. Also, like, is, your, is my probe set at X10? Uh, 10 times or 1 times, I think it is set at, let's set at uh, 10. So I might not want that. I mean, that's, uh, that's some fun squiggles. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, because on the, on the screen it's set at uh, 1x. And the probe was 10x. So I changed that. Um, I mean, that looks like the kind of jiggery pokery I was hoping to see. Set it to 10x if you want full bandwidth. Okay. Let's see. I can push buttons. At one point, I knew a bit how this worked. 
But that definitely looks like it's noise. Or like sound, soundy noise. So now I really want to find an audio cable. Because I would love to hear this thing make noise. So I guess note to self, I'm going to probably have a stream where I sit down with my oscilloscope and uh, refresh myself on it. Well, that's annoying. I have a, I have a speaker. I need an aux cable. But I think it might be working. I got lots of garbage around here. But yeah, I um, I was doing a bunch of like electronics kits builds and stuff a few years ago when I first got this scope, and I knew more about it then. And then I stopped using it for a bit, and like most of the knowledge just fell out of my head. So I should uh, just spend some time getting to know it in a future stream. I swore I had an audio cable around here somewhere. Oh, wait. I think I just found one. Did I? Okay, well, I think I found one. You're actually happy your project keeps not working. You learn more that way? Yeah. Okay, well, let's try this then. Yeah, I feel like a broken thing that I have to fix can often be very interesting. So I have a speaker. I think I have an aux cable. It wants to connect to Bluetooth. Fail <laughs> fast, learn fast, yep. Still playing music. You can still see this happening. Oh, it just finished playing. I guess another thing I could do, now that it stopped playing, yeah, no. Ah, well. Yeah, this is like super interesting watching me fumble around with wires while it does nothing. I don't really hear anything on here. Well, that's a bummer. If I have even like earbuds somewhere, <laughs> all my audio devices now are Bluetooth. So I don't even have earbuds on me. Well, I think it might be working. And uh, as you're saying, I just built this thing, and if it's not working, well, then maybe my next stream will be me trying to fix it. And then I'll learn something about all those, uh, those ICs that I was asking about. Well, three ICs, not that many. up some of my mess here before I uh, leave for the day. There is some, I'm trying to think if there's like another cool demo I could show on this little machine. 
The sound is the thing I wanted to get working tonight. But there is some cool stuff on here, like, um, it's got a Wi-Fi interface. I can do things like, um, I don't know, let's stop that playing. Pretty sure I can do this. Yeah, okay, the modem's working. No answer. Oh, I know why. I am running a Telnet BBS in my basement. Mostly so I can connect to it with my old machines. Hopefully that works. It's a little slow sometimes. But one of the cool things with this is it uses like ancient software from like the 80s. And uh, you can actually dial up BBSs on the internet via Telnet, download software from them, um, play around on message boards. A lot of folks involved in kind of keeping like a, like a retro experience going with these things. And it runs all the 80s software. So it runs like WordStar, it runs a bunch of games, like I was playing uh, Zork and Rogue and all that fun stuff. Um, if I stream from my basement, I might try streaming this thing hooked up to like a CRT monitor. Really need to hook a speaker up with the bugger though. Uh, trying to remember my password on some of these BBSs. Sometimes that takes a couple times to connect. It's weird because it, it is connected, it's just for some reason my BBS is funky on me sometimes. The author of the Game of Thrones books. He's, yeah, yeah, he used J uh, George R. R. Martin used um, WordStar to write uh, Game of Thrones. I think he might have used the DOS version, but I think he might have started with a CPM machine because he's been writing them for so long. I'm trying to think what else is cool to show off about this machine. I can also, like, I don't know, the lights in the front here. No, I don't want to do that. I can't remember, I think it's in here. Yeah, so there's a, there's a version of Microsoft Basic on here. And uh, I can do things like Oops, what do I call it? Oh, IO Sermon. I'm gonna use some old CAD software. Yeah, I've used um, 360 Fusion, which is, you know, modern from Autodesk. I almost can't imagine doing CAD on like an old monochrome wireframe kind of thing. But yeah, I don't know, you can see this. This is the, uh, I, there's a little basic program. Makes the LEDs go flash, flash, flash. So I can do like a little Knight Rider back and forth thing. It's neat, because that's, um, that's in basic. It's just a bit like peaks and pokes. Well, I guess this is, uh, this is out. Still learning how to program this thing. But it's neat, it's a neat little computer. Um, if you've ever heard of any of the like old 80s and 70s uh, basic programming books, you can run 
all that old code on this thing. Uh, what else is up? I think that... Un until I find a speaker, that's probably about... the end of the string I'm gonna make. So, uh, ooh, yeah. Hour and 45 minutes. I meant to go for an hour. I did not go for an hour. But I built the board. It probably works. I'll get a speaker. I'll try it out. But I think that's that. I think I gotta go to bed. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope it was interesting. I'm gonna export the, the video of this to YouTube. And um, I'll probably be back again. I might have more boards to play on with this thing. I might have other stuff to do entirely. I was even thinking of doing something stupid like... Um, I've got a bunch of old computers in my basement. Maybe I'll set one up and like just have a chill music stream and like type in programs just for more retro garbage fun. Uh, well, yeah. So I think that's it for tonight. Uh, one last little look at this uh, pile of circuits and the, uh, the thing that I managed to build tonight. Hopefully it makes noises soon. Catch you next time.